Hello YouTubers, this is Cessna Ace back again with another video game ads video. I mentioned that I have ordered a lot of video games for a lot of systems and that is of course true. In a recent video I mentioned that they had started to come in. I had received a game for the Famicom for the Atari 2600 and for the Atari 7800. So I figured, well, I'll go ahead and start showing them. Well, yesterday I received a game for the 3DO. And I thought, well, I'll start this video with that game. Comes complete in its original long box. The Daedalus Encounter. Now this is a huge game. And I'm not simply referring to the size of the box. This game is not on one disc. It doesn't take up two discs or three discs. Four discs. This is because this game contains a lot of full motion video and CGI. You might think, well, that's a recipe for disaster. However, the UK's 3DO magazine rated this game 4 out of 5 stars, which is pretty good. And Digital Press also noted in their collector guide that covers the systems of this era that it's a good game. Now, the 3DO, unlike say the Sega CD handles full motion video very well. For example, if you have a 3DO then you've no doubt played Road Rash. Road Rash, the opening sequence is full motion video and it has some full motion video cutscenes. And at least on my Gold Star 3DO, there's not a hint of grain. Now, quality of the long box really nice. If I were a professional grader and I had to gr uh, grade the jewel case and the discs, I would, well, I would most probably go with near mint. Although, for the most part, there is absolutely not a hint of anything wrong with this. The only flaw, apart from the fact that the manual is in glorious black and white, and you can't really call that a flaw because it was printed that way, there are some minor creases on the back of the manual. You may not even be able to see them. That is the only thing wrong. Now I noticed that the discs apart from being numbered, are also color-coded. Each disc is its own color, which is pretty nifty. Now I'd have to look it up, but there is a code that you can use by using various inputs on your controller to bypass the game entirely and play just the cutscenes with her. But overall, I think I got my money's worth on this and I haven't even played the game yet. I've been playing games on my Japanese Master System a lot in the last couple days. I unplugged my Western Master System and plugged in in its place the Japanese Master System. They use the same power supply and the same uh, video output cable. So all I do is disconnect, put one in, reconnect the other. 
I did that because I've been playing a lot of games for the Sega SG-1000 and the Mark III lately, which the Japanese Master System is backwards compatible with. Now, speaking of games of systems of that era, I went ahead and ordered a game for the Famicom. Now, I don't have a Famicom. I don't have any way to play a Famicom, not even one that uses software emulation like a Retron 5 or a Retron 10. Although, I plan to change that. I plan to get something to play Famicom games on. Now, I chose as my first Famicom purchase a game that is one of the landmark puzzle games of its era. The other two, and if I tell you what those two are, you'll be able to guess what this one is. The other two are Columns by Sega and Tetris. This is Clax, published by Hudson Soft, originally released in the arcades by Atari Games. The like on the back. Clax made in USA. Now again, as was the case with that 3DO box, open this up and it's just stunning the quality of what's inside. That was upside down, I believe. The manual is absolutely perfect. There is not a hint of a crease or a stain or anything. The cartridge is wrapped in plastic. Now, Atari Games had a division called Tengen. Tengen published Clax in the US for the NES and they published it in the UK for the Master System. I have both of those versions and I have somewhere Clax for the Lynx published by Atari. This has four copyrights on it. This by the way is release HFC-V6 copyright 1990 Hudson Soft copyright Atari Games Corporation copyright Tengen Incorporated copyright Tengen Limited I think this game was copyrighted. My family doesn't get my sense of humor. I have been told, well, back when I was working for WAWS, now WFOX, I was told by some fellow engineers that my sense of humor was very dry. And one woman said that my sense of humor could pass for British. I don't know if that's true. Some folks in the UK might take offense at that, so pretend I didn't even say it. But, clacks. Clacks. Okay, back when I bought my Atari 7800, I got it boxed at an outlet mall right off the interstate. And it came bundled with 40 complete in-box games. 20 for the 2600 and 20 for the 7800. One that I got back then in that bundle was Asteroids. Now I'm showing you that. Well, I'm showing you that for two reasons. One, Atari Age has come out with a version of Asteroids for the 2600 that uses the paddle or steering controllers. But that's not what I got. Atari Games, released to the arcades way back when, a sequel, 
an enhanced version of Asteroids called Asteroids Deluxe. This is a homebrew port of that version. Now, there's only one thing missing from this version that was included in the arcade original. And that is the arcade original had the pokey chip built into it. The 7800 was designed where you could use the pokey chip in a cartridge if you wanted to, but only two games were released commercially with it. As far as I know, only one homebrew was, and that was a homebrew port of Burger Time called Beef Drop. However, the number of copies that included the pokey chip was very limited, something like 25, because the fine folks at Atari Age did not want to do what they had to do to include the pokey chip, which was to cannibalize 5200s to get the pokey chip out. So the version I have of Beef Drop is called Beef Drop VE. Don't know what that stands for, other than I know it doesn't have the pokey chip in it. Okay, this one is complete in box. This was thirty dollars, by the way. This was thirty. But I paid $15 extra to have it upgraded. Already would come with a manual, but the upgrade gives it a box. The Bite Before Christmas. This is one of their Christmas themed multi carts where the 2600. Okay, my autofocus isn't cooperating. There we go. One I had showed in a previous video was Stella's Stocking. Now this game has, or this multi-cart has four games. They, they are all Christmas themed, but they all tell a unified story of the Christmas quite nearly never was, because the EU, the Elf Union, decides to go on strike. Now, the four games included are Naughty List, Bellhopper, Santa's Scabs, and Christmas Adventure. I don't recall offhand which one it is, but one of the games requires the use of the paddle controller. So, really, really cool. Now, in addition to all of the other games I have coming, which include games for the Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive, the Super Nintendo slash Super Famicom, the Sega SG-1000, and um, well, a lot of games. can't possibly think of all the systems off the top of my head. However, tonight I ordered another game for the 2600 complete in box, another for the 7800 complete in box, and a homebrew for the NES complete in box, a game for the NES that doesn't come with a box, but it's a homebrew, two Japanese exclusives for the 3DO. Now the 3DO doesn't have country or region lockout technology, so most 3DOs will play most 3DO software regardless of where it was released. I believe that includes even PAL standard releases, but as I said, 
the vast majority of the software, doesn't matter where it was released, will play in a 3DO. And one of the games that I ordered, I'll tell you this much, was a game that I saw Luke Morse One do a play video of years ago. And when I saw that play video, I thought to myself, I have got to get a copy of that game, but for some reason I kept putting it off. Well, I have now ordered a copy along with another game. This is also a Japanese exclusive, and I ordered them from a seller in Japan, which is where that Famicom game came from. All right. I think that about covers it for this video. So until next time, stay awesome. Oh, the Vision 200. I have more games coming for it.